Sony, the one and only. If you want to take your gameplay more seriously, whether it's on PC or console, an easy win would be to pick up a proper pro purpose-built gaming monitor like this one from Sony. It's the InZone M9 Mark II. And you might already be familiar with the original M9 from Sony, the Mark I. And if you are, you're probably wondering, what's the difference? What upgrades have Sony InZone made? And is the M1 now the better deal? Or is the Mark II so much better that it's not even worth looking back? Well, stick around because I will answer all of those questions for you. And I will say right now, one of the changes this year might instantly make you change your mind. And you'll see what I mean. So let's start with the design changes first. Sony InZone has ditched the white PlayStation colors on the back and on the stand. And the whole design is now matte black. And I'm told the reason for this is that this monitor is aimed at PC gamers first. Not to say that it won't be probably the best monitor for PS5, but that's the direction they're now going with the InZone stuff. So the actual casing on the monitor's display hasn't really changed since the Mark 1. It's still got that same control stick on the back right corner, which acts like a joystick and it's clickable. And then you've still got that slightly rounded back. With the most significant design change this time being the redesigned stand. The Mark I used to have this kind of tripod style stand, which was great because it allowed you to place your keyboard and mouse right up against it, but it didn't allow for any rotation of the screen without the legs going with it. With the Mark II, Sony InZone have managed to reduce the contact that the M9 makes with your desk massively. It's now using this kind of thin disc with a diameter of around 17 centimeters. It's also surprisingly thin, it's actually just eight millimeters in height. And although it doesn't look like it, it's incredibly stable. And now the range of motion is massively improved. It can actually spin an entire 360 on that disc. But that's not all. They've also improved the range in which the monitor can tilt. So now it can tilt down to minus five degrees and all the way up to 25 degrees if needed. And they've also managed to improve the height adjustment. So now it can actually raise up a bit higher than before. So this is a very notable upgrade. Now, if I was to critique this new design, the only way it could be better next time would be if Sony put a little bit more thought into the cable management side of things, because right now all you get is this purple rubber band. But apart from that, it's definitely one of the best stands out there that I've ever seen on a gaming monitor. But there is another one which is slightly better than this, and we'll come back to that. So there are a couple more less visible upgrades that Sony and Zone have made. For example, the two watt stereo speakers inside the monitor have been upgraded. This is probably in the form of larger drivers or just better quality parts in that area or maybe both, and they won't sound phenomenal, but certainly good enough just to navigate your operating system. So as you know, if you were to sell over 158 million games consoles, you're quite likely to get pretty good at making a controller or two. And of course, I am referring to the one and only Sony PlayStation, and in recent years, you might have noticed, but Sony have set their sights on the PC gaming market. Anyway, many thanks to Sony PlayStation for sponsoring this video and they want me to show you guys some new PC gaming software that they've been working on. And also InZone have managed to reduce the size of the power adapter down by 30%, which is nice, particularly if you care about cable management. Now here are a few more changes. The ports have been upgraded, but also a couple of things have been taken away, but that might be a good thing and I'll explain why. But first, let's get a look at these ports. There are three ways to connect your computer or gaming device to the InZone M9 Mark II. All three of them have been upgraded. The display port that was on the Mark I was version 1.4. The display port now is 2.1, and it still has the same two HDMI 2.1 ports, but now both of those support 160 hertz, and also the display port supports 160 hertz. On the Mark I, the ports supported 144 hertz, which was still very fast, but now, thanks to the upgrades to the other parts of the hardware, they can support 160 hertz. Now here's a little downgrade. You still get the two USB ports and then also a USB port for upgrades and the USB-A port. But this time there is no USB-C, unfortunately. But wait until I give you the good news before you get all upset about that. Now let's talk about the display. So this is arguably the most important aspect of any monitor. And actually it's almost identical in every way to last year's M9 Mark II, with the biggest upgrade, of course, being that 4K 160 Hertz support. Just like the previous version, it's a full array IPS panel with local dimming, it's VESA certified display, HDR 600 rated, 
It supports 10-bit colors and 95% of the DCI P3 color gamut. Now here's a kind of software upgrade and it is to the way that the screen refreshes. InZone calls it the backlight scanning technique and this is designed to help reduce motion blur. And if you're wondering, the gray to gray response time on this monitor is one millisecond. And just like the Mark 1, the Mark 2 supports G-Sync, Adaptive Sync, and VRR and ALLM. So that stuff's kind of similar to the Mark 1, but here's a few more upgrades to the user interface. So Sony InZone didn't mention as to whether the Mark 1 will be getting these updates or not. My guess is it might do, so definitely keep an eye out for them. So with the new Mark 2, you get a 10 level black equalizer setting, and this was actually something that was recommended to them from the Pro Play players at Fnatic because Sony actually have worked with them on a different in-zone monitor which actually might be the greatest gaming monitor ever. There's also a new 24.5 inch mode which you can put the monitor into. This is the size of display that's used in pro gaming tournaments so that's why this feature is here and you can also shift the placement of that crop to the bottom of the screen or just keep it in the center and then there are of course tons more useful tools in the UI all of which are designed to give you that gaming advantage that you're looking for. However you won't be able to hit that full 160 hertz with a PS5 so maybe the Mark 1 if you could find a good deal would be just as good for the PS5. But right now, there is a catch. Remember how I said they've taken a couple of things away, for example, the USB-C port? There's also no KVM switch now. Well, this could be a good thing because even though InZone have made all of these other upgrades and improvements to this hardware, at the same time, they've managed to reduce the launch day price on the M9 Mark II down by 100 pounds here in the UK and 100 euros in the rest of Europe compared to the retail price on the Mark I. The Mark I retails for £999. The Mark II retails for £899. And yes, I know it's still not cheap, but they have made a lot of improvements here on the Inzo Mark II, including the price. And in my opinion, it might be one of the best gaming monitors out there today, but it's definitely not number one because Sony Inzone has just launched another is superior in pretty much every single way. It is called the Sony InZone M10S. So if you have a bulletproof wallet and price does not matter to you and you want the best gaming monitor possible, you might wanna check out the Sony InZone M10S. It's a brand new model from Sony InZone. It's an OLED and it supports 480 Hertz. And I did get a quick look at this at the Gamescom. I didn't get to play any games on it, so I can't actually tell you how it performs. But if you guys wanna get a first look at it, I did make a video all about that. That's on screen right now. Hope you guys got some value out of this video. If you wanna check out the price on the Mark I and the Mark II right now, I'll leave affiliate links in the description below. And if you guys wanna see some more tech reviews from me, make sure you're subscribed, turn on your notifications, and possibly leave me a comment. And if you just subscribed, you're now one of the finest subscribers known to man, and I will see you in the next one. Don't be late.